is not eternal. Your mental condition is not eternal. Your career situation is not eternal. Now we're talking about vision today. God spoke to, God spoke to Dr. Francisco and myself and said it is time for you to go big, go digital, go global. And I mentioned and I said, said this last week that when God speaks into the spirit of prevailing word, he's not just speaking to me as the, the founder of the ministry or to Dr. Francisca and I, but he's speaking to each one of us and giving us specific instructions on what must happen. You are in a season of divine expansion, a season of divine enlargement. God is enlarging you. God is increasing you. And God is taking you to your next level. So I want you to know that. I want you to understand that. And I want you to run with that. So it's the season of going big, going digital, and going global. So you will see this more and more and more over the next year, the next five years, the next ten years. We are going on this theme, go big. And we will work very deliberately over the next season to enlarge you, to increase you, to grow you, to coach you, to develop you. So you will hear in the message a mix of both, a mix of both the, the coach speaking the word into your life and also the, the apostle rebuking certain things in your life so that you can walk in the fullness of what God has prepared for you. So today I want to speak today uh, specifically on the title vision and uh, subtitle is Abraham the visionary. Abraham the visionary. We're going to talk about a man whom most of you know that I love very much. One of my favorite Bible characters, Abraham. I have spent thousands of hours studying the book of Genesis, probably about 15 or 16,000 hours studying the book of Genesis just to bring out and understand the secrets, the mysteries, the hidden uh, mysteries that God has placed in his word that are designed to unlock the fullness of what God has prepared for you. And particularly with Abraham, uh, because God, the, the parasha that opens up and introduces Abraham and gives him the center stage is the parasha called the Lech Lecha in Hebrew, which literally is taken from the very first words of Genesis chapter 12. And the Lord God had said to Abraham, go for yourself. In Hebrew, that is the phrase Lech Lecha. The phrase literally translated means go for yourself within yourself to bring out that which is within you that has the capacity to make you a blessing to your generation. Go for yourself within yourself and discover that which is within you that will enable you to make you a blessing to your generation. So the day you were born, in fact, even before you were born, the day you were born was a recognition of that which was within you. But the day you were conceived, the Bible says, David talking and he says, you knew me when I was curiously wrought in my mother's womb. In other words, when God was shaping you, forming you, he was putting in you, encoding in you, encrypting into your very DNA, your destiny, your purpose, your vision, your mandate, your assignment, your calling. So the day you arrive on earth was the day that God was releasing a blessing on the planet that shall redefine the world as we know it. So you are not a mistake. You are a collection of giftings that are a blessing to your generation. It is up to you to go for yourself within yourself so that you access that which is within you that will enable you to become a blessing to your generation. So that verse goes beyond God just saying, Get out of your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. And in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. God was actually saying, your ability to be a blessing to your generation is inside of you. So we're talking about Abraham, the man of vision. Abraham, the visionary. Uh, open your Bible, if you have your Bible, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And we're going to read verse 8 to verse 10. 
Hallelujah. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should afterward receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Powerful word. He obeyed. God called him. He obeyed. Afterwards, God, God was speaking to him and God gave him a calling. He obeyed that calling. And notice it says, he went out after the purpose and the plan of God. He went out, not knowing whither he went. He didn't know, where am I going? But he obeyed. By faith he sojourned in, a, in the land of promise as a stranger, or as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. And he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Praise God. If, if, uh, uh, a number of very exciting things here. We're talking about building a vision is a faith journey. Building a vision is a faith journey. So you cannot neglect the message of faith. You cannot neglect the importance, the significance of faith. The imperative factor of faith is it is necessary. So God is speaking to a man called Abraham here and he says, get out of your country. Lech, lecha. Go for yourself. Go to a land that I will show you. It is for your benefit that you go. It is for your, for your profit that you go. It is for your gain that you obey the instruction. Abraham obeys the word of the Lord, not knowing where he went. But he knew that if it is God who's calling me, it's going to be a great journey. Then it says, by faith, he sojourned the land of promise. By faith, he went through the land of promise. Dr. Francisca was talking about stepping your foot upon the land, upon the car. God will take you on certain journeys. God will take you on certain sojournings. Primarily because he wants you to experience that which shall be your inheritance. He will take you in somebody else's car. Instead of getting jealous about their car, enjoy the car and say to yourself, one day this shall be my story. You go and visit somebody's business. Don't get jealous and gossip about them. Say to yourself, one day it will be somebody visiting my business. God will take you on so journeys so that your visuals can be upgraded to match that which he is about to do in your life. A lot of times the visuals that you are operating by are way below the standard that God has set for you. So he will expose you to visuals that match with that which he is about to do in your life so that you can adjust the visuals that you have to match what God is showing you. So he says get out of the land where you are in Babylon, in ur -Kazdin, is mediocre compared to what I want to establish in your life. So I, in order for me to be able to do it, you've got to see it. You've got to see it with the eye of faith. You've got to see it with the, with the eye of the Spirit so that you upgrade your vision corner, so that you upgrade your visuals, so that you upgrade your reference point so that it matches with what I want to do. So the Bible says he sojourned in a strange land, dwelling in tabernacles, temporary dwelling places. T tabernacles are temporary dwelling places. He sojourned dwelling in tabernacles. God says your current situation is not permanent. Hey. You're still in a tabernacle. I said you're still in a tabernacle. Your current dwelling place is temporary. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't convert your tent to become a mansion. Because the tent is temporary. He is still taking you somewhere. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. So he, he sojourned. And then notice another very important thing, especially to those parents that were dedicating children. Notice, he says, dwelling in tabernacles with who? With Isaac and Jacob. 
those that will be in co-inheritors with him of that promise. He was with them. They were seeing. They were hearing. They were visualizing. There are certain things that God wants to do in your life which will not fully manifest in the duration of your life but they will be established for your children and your children's children and generations after. There are things that are so big that God wants to do. Your years, you still have only 60 years to go, 70 years to go. Within that time frame, what God wants done is bigger than the 70 70 year period that you will be around. So not only is he doing something great in your life, he's doing something great for your children. Praise God. Thank you for those five good amens. Glory to God forevermore. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. And he looked for a city which hath foundations powerful he looked for a city which hath foundations you better be looking for a city that has foundations you better be looking for something that has biblical foundations you better be looking for something that is kingdom foundations there are two systems operating in the world today the system of satan and the system of the kingdom of god anything that is of the system of the kingdom of satan is going to fall and crumble or has fallen and has crumbled the bible says babylon is fallen is fallen so god was telling abraham go and look for something that has foundations because this babylon this system that you're operating under is fallen i'm taking you into a whole new system into a whole new kingdom we are establishing something that is eternal and notice the mastermind the engineer the builder is god it says whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. The journey of significant living begins with a vision. A vision that ignites a spirit of faith that sparks a lifetime of supernatural living. We can close right there and go home. Did you hear that? The journey of significant living. God has called you to live a significant life. God has called you to live a life of significance. So the journey of significant living begins with a vision that ignites a spirit of faith. And the spirit of faith ignited on the inside of you begins to spark a lifestyle of supernatural living. Signs, wonders, and miracles begin to, to, uh, to explode all around you. Hallelujah. This week I was prompted to message one of my brothers and, uh, from the, uh, that I haven't spoken to in many years. And when I called him, he said, I'm so glad we, I mean, we're talking, we're, we're chatting. And he says to me, do you remember your wedding day? This is 19 years ago on the 31st of, of August. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, do you remember the words that were spoken? And he says, remember the word of the Lord that came. And said, it will be miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I'm telling you, we, the way we have lived life has been one miracle after another. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I'm telling you, you cannot get to the destination. You cannot get to the place that God has called you to. Until you learn to live in the supernatural. To live a lifestyle of the supernatural. It's got to be miracle after miracle after miracle. I remember those early days after we got married. There were all kinds of shortages. There were all kinds of things happening. You had to queue for bread. You had to queue for mealy meal. You had to queue for rice. You had to queue for, for cereal and so on. But I remember... How God supernaturally would provide for us. I mean, a couple of months into marriage, God blessed us with three children before our biological children came. So we had many, many children to feed. We also had other sons and daughters that came into our house. So our house was always full because we were youth pastors working with young people. And you know, young people eat a lot of food. 
But every week we would get a miracle of somebody coming and bringing mealy meal. Somebody coming and bringing bread. You have to live in the supernatural. I understand when those ravens were bringing food to Elijah the prophet. I understand what it means to have ravens bringing meal and meat and food at your doorstep. I'm telling you, you cannot fulfill the purpose of God without the supernatural. The life of the believer demands a supernatural explanation. Amen. It demands a supernatural explanation. How are you making it? How are you surviving? How are you not getting COVID? How are you not getting sick? How are you keeping your marriage together? How are you standing strong in the midst of the storms? How are you coming out when there's economic issues? How are you joyful when everybody else is sad and depressed? We are living in a time where the supernatural must be a part of your life. Your life must Demand a supernatural explanation. You must learn to not only place a demand on the supernatural manifesting in your life, but you must also learn to give a supernatural explanation that it is the Lord that has brought me this far. You cannot be a visionary until you step into the realm of faith. Bible says, Proverbs 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he where there is no vision where there is no vision vision becomes the guide rails that keep you in the center of the road as you're going up a steep mountain it becomes the guidelines that keep you stable and safe Without vision, life becomes lascivious. It becomes loose. It becomes without control. Many people are li living lascivious lives because you're not allowing vision to guide you. You get into any relationship. You talk to anybody. You do anything simply because your life has no vision. There are people I don't talk to. There are people I don't keep company with. There are people I don't associate with. Why? Because vision demands that I, ke I keep away. I stay away from certain people. There are certain things I cannot do because vision demands that I don't do them. And I'm not even talking about sin. I'm talking about some things that are just normal. Vision. Are you living your life by a clear, compelling vision? Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there's no financial vision, your money dies. Where there's no career vision, your career dies. Where there is no business vision, your business dies. Where there's no marriage vision, your marriage dies. Where there's no health vision, your health dies. Where there is no six-pack vision, you will have a one-pack. You must live your life by a clear, compelling vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the challenge we have in the church when it comes to talking about vision is people in the church are lazy. We expect, like we're talking about the supernatural, we're talking about miracles. We expect that God will do everything. I believe in miracles, but I believe in work. It's in the Bible. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of God, but I will spend 10, 12, 15, 16 hours working. Don't wake up at 10 o'clock and say, the pastor said, uh, uh, the life of vision and the life of a believer demands a supernatural explanation. God's not going to do the laundry for you. God's not going to wash the floor and sweep the floor. God's not going to wash the dishes. God's not going to put clothes on your body. I understand when we sing like when we sing songs like it's you that puts money in my pocket uh, but but you see the problem with songs like that is they cause believers to have this warped belief that I just wake up and be lazy and do whatever I want and I'm going to find money in my pocket no you've got to work for money You've got a vision for money. You've got a plan for money. You've got to strategize for money. You've got to get, your, get off of your blessed assurance and do some work. Amen. You, 
Hallelujah. While everybody's watching, is it thing or you're busy preparing, you're busy planning, you're busy meditating, you're busy watching TED Talks, you're busy listening to Dr. Teach, you're busy developing a strategy. It's you who puts money in my pocket. Somebody worked for that money while you were busy being... Okay. It's not a bad song because spiritually we understand. So be balanced. Amen. <laughs> vision is seeing vision is seeing something come into existence as if it already existed. Visionary people live a life that is different. They have an excitement. They have an effervescence. They have a confidence. They exude an energy that is extraordinary. Why? Because they are beginning to see something as if it already existed. That is why when I preach here, there may be a hundred, a few hundred people, but when I preach, I, I, I'm preaching to, to the person on the fifth balcony, sitting on seat number 4,448. Because I see it as if it already existed. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Live like you're already a wife. You're believing, you're believing God to get married? Begin to live responsibly. Begin to live like God has already blessed you with a husband. Okay. Don't throw yourself all over the place. Hoping that one of the places you throw yourself, you will catch. It's not fishing. Vision is today's picture of tomorrow's reality. That's why it's a, faith, it's a faith thing. Do you have a picture of tomorrow's reality? Do you know what tomorrow would look like? Do you know what six weeks from now will look like? Do you know what six years from now will look like? See yourself attending your, the baby dedication of your daughter's baby. Praise God. A clear picture of tomorrow. Vision is when you can see it in your mind. Remember the references I was talking about earlier on. And begin to imagine it. One of your most important times in your day is your imagination time. Do you take time to sit and imagine Imagination is putting pictures together of what you desire to see. Stop putting pictures together of your funeral. You're seeing yourself dead. You're seeing yourself dying. You're seeing yourself failing. What is your imagination saying? God moved Abram from Ur Kasdin and brought him to Canaan so that the picture could change. What is on your wall? What is on your laptop? What is on your, your landing page? What are the pictures? I don't post anything on any of my social media pages that I do not want to visualize as the reality that I will live. So when false prophets are going to feed people with grass, I'm not going to put that there. Because whatever I put and I post becomes the visuals that I pursue and make real. Purpose is when you know and understand what you were born to accomplish. Do you know what you were born to accomplish? The word of God says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. Let's read this. It says, we having the same spirit of faith. As you're stepping into the realm of vision, you need to step into the realm of the spirit of faith. Say amen at least once in the service before you go home. Hallelujah. I, I, I said say amen at least once. I mean just behind that mask, say amen. You're watching online. Thank you so much for joining in. This is Prevailing Word Ministries International, a family for you to belong. And you're listening to Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa, Africa's leading success coach. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And we 
having. Somebody say, I have it. Say it again. Say, I have it. He says, we having, we have it. We have the same spirit of faith. You're not trying to get it. You have it. Whether or not you've used it, whether or not you've practiced it, whether or not you've engaged it is another issue. But we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. You see, visionaries have a language that is uncommon. Visionaries have a language that is uncommon. They speak in a different way. Their language is different. I can sit with you for five minutes and I can tell whether you're a visionary or a non-visionary. I can sit with you for five minutes and I can tell you where you will be in the next five years just by listening to you talking. Well, that's what I do for a living. I'm a coach. I listen to people telling me where they are going in the next five years. And then when they get there, they say, I don't know how it ended up like this, Pastor. <laughs> well, you were talking to force, weren't you? Better this husband mean I'm going to leave him. Pastor, I don't even know how it happened. You said it. I refuse to share. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and takes away the sheshing. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we are having the same spirit of faith. Have the same spirit of faith. Activate the spirit of faith. Change your language. Change your reference point. Once the images begin to shift, the language begins to shift. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 reads, while, I love this one, I love this one. Why will look not to the things which are seen, but to the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, Abra Koshakata, are eternal. So Abraham left Urkazdin or the land of Babylon and went looking for a building whose maker was God. The Bible says a building that had foundations, something that is eternal. So we look not. To the things that are seen, but to the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. How do you develop the ability to look at what is not seen? By staying in the word. By praying in the Holy Ghost. By keeping good company. Have ever noticed that there's some company that always makes you see the bad? There are some people in your life that you just have to get rid of. Mm. Praise God. Now don't go home and say to your husband, yeah, did you hear the pastor said I must get rid of you? Now these days you have to explain everything. Otherwise people misconstrue you. Yeah, you know, the, you know the, the pastor said there are some bad people in my life that I must get rid of. You are one of them. Your language is bad. Your attitude is bad. Your habits are bad. So I bind you. Get out of my life in Jesus' name. <laughs> well, we look not. Very important principle. We look not. We observe not. Why? Because whatever you are looking at is creating images. Every time you blink, you're taking a picture. Every time you blink, you're taking a picture. Every time you blink, you're creating images in your brain. So the question is, what are you looking at? Are you looking at defeat? Are you looking at divorce? Are you looking at pain? Are you looking at suffering? Are you looking at poverty? Are you looking at brokenness? Are you looking at depression? 
Every time you blink, you're taking pictures. So now there's a file full of the pictures that you've been taking over the last 15 years, 20 years. So God said to Abraham at age 70, the pictures that you've been taking are wrong. It's now time to take new pictures. So in order to take new pictures, I need to give you a new location. You should hear, you should hear Carice, my daughter. When you want to take pictures, she'll say, no, we have to make sure the lighting is good. Uh, I want the right lighting. I want the right background. No, uh, Dad, don't take a picture. We can't post that picture because it's not nice. So if we're that pedantic about pictures and selfies, why should we not have the same passion regarding vision and life? No, I can't take a picture here because no, 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 this doesn't represent the brand. The lighting is not right. The scenery is not right. It's a scenery of poverty. I refuse to be associated with poverty. I refuse to be associated with death. I refuse to be associated with sickness. Let's take the right picture. Visionaries are the people that know how to consistently go back to their photo album and delete the unnecessary pictures and frame the right pictures. I like this picture. I like this one, delete. And after it's deleted and it's in the delete box, go to the delete box and delete it. Because one day you'll be tempted. One day you'll be tempted to go back to that old picture. It's like people that get married and they still keep pictures of their ex. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just keeping them. For what? <laughs> yes, delete, delete, delete. So while we look not to the things that are seen, because the pictures that you're taking are going to occupy space, they're going to keep your focus, they're going to keep your attention. You've got to learn to delete the pictures that are not necessary. Vision, whoops, vision must create a clear mental picture of that which you want to pursue. In Romans chapter 4 verse 18, the Bible says, against hope. What is hope? Hebrews chapter 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So now that you've taken the pictures and you've put them in a frame and put them in a room where you go in to look at the pictures, those pictures become the impression on your mind that will become the reality that you live. So hope is the picture. Hope is the photo. It's the picture of the Maybach. It's the picture of the yacht. It's the picture of the seven-bedroomed house. It's the picture of you walking down the aisle getting married. That's the hope. But the Bible says a Abraham had to come to a place where against hope, he had to believe and say, uh-huh, I've got the pictures, I've got all of this, and Maybe the pictures are negative because I haven't had a child in a long time. But against every piece of evidence that is telling me I cannot live a life, I'm going to step out of that and step into faith. I'm going to step out of that and step into my significance because I'm placing a demand that the picture that I have must become a reality. Visionaries are people of faith. You cannot live the life of faith without living the life of of vision and you cannot live the life of vision without living the life of faith so the instruction is you are to look at the vision not the current reality as the current circumstances are subject to the power of faith ha. the current circumstances are subject to the power of faith I said the current reality you're living is subject to the power of faith. Your singleness is not eternal. 
Your poverty and lack is not eternal. Your mental condition is not eternal. Your career situation is not eternal. It is subject to the power of faith. Visionaries are people that have the capacity to superimpose the picture of their desired reality over the picture of their current reality. Faith is about erasing obliterating, annihilating, pulverizing that which Satan has told you is your eternal reality and superimpose that with a picture of that which I desire. I refuse to remain in this situation. I refuse to remain limited in my finances, in my job, in my career. Faith people are people that change their current reality and begin to progressively move into their desired reality. I heard of a man whose name was Jabez, the man who was born causing pain. His mother called him pain and says, your name is now Jabez. But he came to a point in his life where he said, I am tired of causing pain. I'm tired of being called pain. I want something different. I want a different reality. I see that my life can be a blessing. I see that my destiny can be different. I see that I can redefine my life. So I choose today to superimpose the blessing over the pain. So he placed a demand and he said, God, that you would bless me indeed. And the Lord blessed him and he changed his destiny. I'm talking to somebody here. Your vision will change your current reality. Your vision will redefine your life and your future and your destiny. The picture must be clear enough to mobilize you to act. If a picture is unclear, you will not move. The Bible says, write the vision down. Habakkuk chapter, chapter 2, he says, write the vision down. Make it plain on tablets of stone so that he that readeth it can run. The image, the pictures must be so clear. You must be clear. What kind of house do I want? What kind of life do I want? What kind of marriage do I want? What kind of children do I want? What kind of financial position do I want? What kind of body do I want? What kind of hairstyles do I want? Mm. You know, I, I, I love my daughters. You know, they, 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 they amaze me. I wish I could be like them. They, they know what hairstyle they'll have in December. They know what hairstyle they'll have after that. They know what type of nails they'll have after that. They have pictures of after I do these nails, dad, I want to do these nails. And then after I do these nails, I'm going to do these nails. And these nails will match with this hairstyle. And then this hairstyle will match with these toes. And then dad, I'm going to need an outfit to match the nail. Uh, I knew where it was going. <laughs> so the vision, the new nails will superimpose themselves on the current nails. The new hairstyle will superimpose itself on the current hairstyle. Are you listening to me this morning? But without the picture of what you desire, there will never be a change. The only reason you're looking at what is temporary is because you don't have a picture of what is eternal. Nudge your neighbor and say, I'm glad I came to church today. The picture must be a vivid, so vivid or vivid enough to cause your language to change. <laughs> when the picture is vivid, your language will change. You'll talk different. You know that little meme that circulated a little while back of the woman who was told, I would like you to act as this person who's poor. And she says, no, I don't want to act as that person who's poor. She says, no, but it's okay. It's just acting. She says, no, I can't even act it. <laughs> if you're going to live a life of significance, you have to be a woman or a man of faith. You better go to the bookshop and buy faith steps 
by crazy faith, by faith life. And for the next two months, you're reading those books, building your faith, uh, building your confidence in the word of God. What is faith? How does faith work? How do I grow my faith? How do I establish my faith? Because without faith, your vision will remain stillborn in the womb of ambition. The journey begins in a place of uncertainty. So when you find yourself in a place of uncertainty, you must know, worship team, please come up and help me now, I'm closing. You must know, it begins in the place of uncertainty. God said to Abram, go to a place. I don't, can you imagine that day, Abram wakes up after the conversation with God and he goes to, to Mrs. Abraham and says, uh, babe or honey or chocolate or olive, I don't know what they called each other in those days, olive. And, and she, she turns, and Sarah turns to him and says, yes, my hunk, or yes, my lord, or my hero. Says, God spoke to me. Which God? Jehovah. The last time I checked, there was no list. On the list, there was no God called Jehovah. Which God are you talking about? Says, this is a new God. He's the God of what? He's the all-knowing, the all-mighty, the all-powerful, the most high God. Are you telling me this God that, you're talk that you are talking to is the God who is the God of everything? Because in Babylon, they had a God for fertility, a God for planting crops, a God for Easter, Passover, uh, not Passover, uh, every other thing had a God. So he says, no, Jehovah spoke to me. What did he say? He says, let's get out of Ur Kasdin and go where? I don't know, but he's taking us to a land that that he will show us. A land that has foundations. A land that has purpose. A land that has prosperity. A land that has unlimited shopping. A land that has and you can imagine Sarah, she had to submit because she understood. The Bible says women must be like, like their mother Sarah who submitted to her husband calling him Lord. So now the conversation is going on. And he says, we're going to a land that God will show us. Where is the land? What type of land is it? Let's go to Google Maps and check it out. No, it's not on Google Maps. So, 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 so how will we know when we get there? We will know that we know. Because God will confirm it. And they get up. Let me tell you today that the journey of vision is a journey of uncertainty. Yes, you will have the pictures. Yes, you will have the vision. Yes, you'll have the vision corner. Yes, you'll have the detail. But there are certain aspects of it that may not always be made clear. But it requires that you still take the step of faith. You take the step of faith trusting that it's going to work out. You take the step of faith trusting that God is helping you. You take the step of faith knowing that you're not walking alone for he has promised that I will be with you and I will not leave you until I have fulfilled everything that I've said unto you God takes you on a journey and step by step you begin to walk and the picture becomes clearer the Bible says the path of the just is like a way that becomes clearer and clearer until it's as bright as the noonday sun when God made me write my first book a lot of things about books were not clear but I took the step of faith I began to walk I began to go the journey I began to obey and now Faithland Publishers has published hundreds of books for different authors I didn't see it as clearly then as I see it now but guess what this is still but the beginning we are still on the journey we are still looking for that city whose builder and maker is God a city with eternal foundations things may not be clear maybe but I want you to know that as you obey the voice of the Lord the picture will become clearer the destiny will become clearer the assignment will become clearer God's hand is upon your life he's called you to be a visionary he's planted a vision on the inside of you and is waiting for you to obey him he said to Abraham, get thee out 
of your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. God visits him and he says to him, Lech, Lech, I'm taking you somewhere. You are a gift. You are a blessing. There's anointings on the inside of you. There's giftings on the inside of you. Some of the things that you look at and say, why am I like this? Why do I have these proclivities? Why do I have these idiosyncrasies? Why do I behave this way? Why is my personality like this? It's because there's a gift on the inside of you that is calling you to go to your next level. There's a gift on the inside of you that is uncomfortable with mediocrity. There's a gift on the inside of you that says there's more to your life than you can imagine. There's an anointing on the inside of you to get up and obey the Lord, to get up and walk in the path that God has prepared. He is saying to you today, Lech Lecha, there's a gift, there's a calling, there's an anointing, there's an ability that God has placed on the inside of you. So I came as an apostle today to say it's time to have vision. It's time to have a glimpse of what God has prepared for you. It's time for you to begin to see the divine purpose and plan of God for your life. It's time for you to get up and say, oh God, I believe your word. I believe your promises. It's time for you to get up and say, I will obey. Our founding scripture said, God spoke to Abraham and Abraham obeyed so stand up on your feet right now stand up on your feet right now and I want you to declare to the Lord I will obey I will obey the calling I will obey the assignment you've called me to be a millionaire so that I'm a kingdom financier I obey your calling you've called me into business you've put business abilities on the inside of me I will obey and walk in the fullness of it you've called me and anointed me to be a blessing to my generation I will obey right now lift up your hands and begin to talk to the Lord there's vision crying on the inside of you there's greatness crying on the inside of you your next level is crying on the inside of you God is waiting for you on the inside of you and he is ready to take your life to the next level somebody give him praise somebody give him praise somebody give him praise your next level is here i said your next level is here he is calling you to your next level god bless you to earn the right to sit at the table of extraordinary i refuse to limit god Partnership is the way to accelerate what God is doing in your life. The Bible says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before the great. What is your gift? Because time is going to multiply back to you whatever you deposit into. And he says, because of what you have done, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Life. When you come into the house of God, you are in an environment that potentially could make you a great leader. A great... I want to encourage you today. You're about to catch your biggest net of fish. You're about to catch your biggest deal. You're about to step into a level of business that will redefine your business forever.